come until six months ago, I was astonished by the fatality that the people were bringing to it. And so I decided a few Sundays ago to go to the park, to the Putnam Trail, and ask a few people what they thought about the park, what it means to them, what they thought about painting, and so forth. I use it as an escape from my daily grind. You know, it's not um, being in social work. I don't. I don't really have. I don't. I don't have the luxury of being able to travel around a lot. This is. This is sacred ground to me. It feels sacred. In some cases, it's as close as I can get to to nature. And so, you know, leave my trail alone. You sort of feel a part of something bigger than just yourself. And, and the part really brings that out. And if you just came over it, it's sort of like bringing a piece of a concrete jungle into our trail. 79,200 square feet of asphalt that the city plans to dump on our beautiful nature trail. We hope that we can stop that, and it should be stopped because it's a wrong idea and it's preventing countless future generations from truly enjoying the trail as the unique trail that it truly is. And sometimes there's something out of the ordinary that pops up that is amazing and people come from all over to see it. I'm chairman of the Friends of Van Cortland Park. I'm a member of the board of directors of the Roadrunners, uh, New York Roadrunners. Uh, but I'm speaking for myself. I'm not speaking on behalf of any organization. The idea that uh, we can't work out some kind of accommodation, uh, either just by a very modest expenditure of, uh, of tidying up small portions of this rock pack trail, or doing what was done uh, 15, 17 years ago for the cross-country trail, which is using crushed rock, which has the same feel as hard factor, uh, it, it seems to me would be a perfectly appropriate accommodation. And I do not understand why the Parks Department has been so consistently dishonest in its description of what they intended to do and how they've gone about and done it. They don't have to pave it in order to make it accessible. They don't have to widen it as much. They can put down a surface uh, called stone dust that would fit in with the park's character and its history and stay, stay environmentally friendly because it's a permeable surface as opposed to asphalt, which is not permeable. Stone dust actually costs no more than asphalt to maintain per year, $1,500 per mile. I think that paving it would really serve no purpose that serves my interests anyway, uh, because I'm getting old and I fall down, and I would rather fall on this than get on the pavement. It, it's really nasty. Do plenty of parents come out here with their children? You know, kids like to dig, they like to get dirty. Let them do it. <coughs> yes, ma'am. My name is Mike Arnstein, and I moved to the area 11 years ago because of this trail. This is what sealed the deal for me and where I raised my three kids. I think the community board was given the incorrect information by the Parks Department, and I appreciate you for taking a second look at this issue because it's a big, important concern for the community. 
And I think we can accommodate all users without having to take down a lot of trees and without having to widen it and changing it from the beauty that it exists in today. Stone dust and some simple improvements, as Eric Seif recommended in the video, is more than enough. And I implore you to take another look at this issue and make a decision and disapprove of the park's proposals for this project. The, um, the, New York City, the New York City Design Commission suggested sown dust initially when they were presented with the project. And for lots of reasons, which I believe were lies on the behalf of the Parks Department, they went back over on that suggestion and went along with asphalt. This is an important issue, and I invite others to come up and let the community board know how important it is to them as well. In addition to the three people that you're allowing us, there's uh, over 2,100 people here that you can take a look at, too. Some of may, you may know me as the Capac Street Gardener. So I know about volunteering. But you may be assured that if they were saying, we're not going to pick up the garbage on Capac Street anymore, and we're not going to uh, do anything to improve the quality of life on Capac Street, and you have to only do it by volunteering, by privatizing it, I wouldn't be doing that. A lot of us are here tonight to stop our elected and appointed officials from committing an environmental crime and a social crime. It is very clear that paving and widening the Hudson Nature Trail, which hasn't been a rail trail in 50 years, would disrupt the wildlife's presence. Talk about enhancing the experience, bringing kids to look at the birds. There wouldn't be birds. If you cut down the trees, which he showed pictures of, those big trees would not be there. When they paved the night from 96 to 125th along the Hudson River, the red-tailed hawks, who used to be every hundred yards in the autumn hunting there, no more. Bicyclists, recreational motorbikes, whoosh, yeah, that was there. And it would be a social crime if they took away this unique, because water-bordered, natural area, it's not the same as the hill woodland trails, which no one is saying have to be paid for, paved for ADA compliance. If they took this away from a neighborhood, a working class neighborhood, who goes there not to see pylons and uprights of a former um, train stop shelter, but to see muskrats and geese and swans and kingfishers, those creatures would not be there if you pave and widen. And if you take that away from a community for whom this is a, a, an oasis of mental sanity, just a block away from the, the subway that defines their lives, and you do this because some Westchester commuters want to be able to speed on their commute to Wall Street, or some bicycling touring groups who can probably go to the Galapagos for their nature tours, you want to be, have a streamlined route occasionally, once or twice a year, and you take away a refuge for the, calling it a choice, that's an environmental crime. It is also a social crime. And it is mainly, it seems to be in the case of the Hudson Greenway, where the bicyclists don't want to use this thing, and the hubris of this grandiose plan is mind-boggling. Uh, they are doing the same thing. They want to put a marina in Jamaica Bay and an oil pipeline under it. And Jamaica Bay, Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge, by the way, has a natural surface. And no one is complaining that it's uh, dangerous or whatever. People use it the way it is because it's a nature refuge. So is the Putnam Trail. If you take this away, as they want to do in Jamaica Bay, as they want to do in Flushing Meadows, Corona Park. They want to put in stadium, soccer stadium, tennis stadium. This is all being done in the name of choice. And what it comes down to is our officials, Parks Department, etc., don't want to fight for proper public maintenance funding. 
And so they say, oh, well, we have to do it cheaply. Well, if you accept that logic, and if you accept that logic uh, that we have to have private partnerships, maybe what they want to have is a McDonald's by that the train shelter. I don't know. We already have the skating room private concessionaire. But if you accept that logic, it's like a game of limbo. How low will you go? You, you, they'll take away the sanitation. They'll take away your schools in the name of choice. We don't want to have those pesky unionized teachers. We can do it all with a private consulting, private choice. Irrelevant. We cannot accept this logic. We don't, I'm just, yes, I am about. We, this is, this would be a social crime against the working class community as well as an environment environmental crime, and it should be challenged legally, by all means, but we must mobilize the power, the mass power of demonstrations, strikes if necessary, against the bulldozers. We cannot accept this logic that they have to take away our most basic nature, our most basic asset.